Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Now Jordan, I just want to quickly recap one comment that you made in your most recent newsletter that you sent out to subscribers uh, at the beginning of the week, let's say. And the comment really deals with how gold and GDX have declined so much against the underlying U.S. stock market. Now, some of these ratios, you even note that we could be looking at an eight-year bottoming formation that should eventually lead to a significant breakout in gold and gold stocks. But man, even the last couple weeks, couple months, there has been this massive outperformance in terms of U.S. markets over the precious metals. You can make a broader comment saying that there's been this more risk on trade rather than risk off trade. That's been a big discrepancy. What else can you share with us in terms of this ratio and comparing the precious metals to the outperformance of the U.S. markets? Well, I feel like we are in a way almost where we were, like let's call it three years ago or four years ago when we, when we were talking about how important it is for precious metals to outperform the stock market to be in a real and sustained bull market and i mean until the last several months i mean they, they have done that and that's you know part of why we've been in a real bull market but Corey, if you take a step back and you pull up like a 10 or a 15 year chart and you look at gdx divided by the stock market or gold divided by the stock market they are in a eight year bottoming formation and looking at, uh, for example, gold against uh, the stock market, like you have major resistance around. Um, so yesterday it closed below, it closed at 0 0.48, but you have eight year resistance at about 0 0.65 to 0 0.70. And when that, breaks to the upside there's a potential measured upside target of like 0 0.9 or as high as one so that would mean that gold would be one to the s p 500 so you know that's projecting gold to i mean that would project gold to potentially over three thousand you know depending on where the s p is at that time so in the very big picture um the next big leg higher in this sector, I believe uh, you will see GDX and gold strongly outperforming the stock market. And they've recently, in, in recent months, as you said, I mean, they've, they've performed really poorly and these ratios have gone much lower uh, than I would have anticipated. And what's interesting is if you look at gold's fundamentals, like real interest rates have been declining the yield curve has been steepening. All these things are bullish for gold. So you haven't had like a real fundamental change that could explain that. And if you look at the bull market in the 2000s, you didn't really see that much of a decline uh, in these ratios, like as sharp of a decline as we've seen recently. However, if you go back and you look at the 1960s and 70s, there were some periods where uh, the ratio in favor of precious metals did decline quite a bit. Yet overall, I mean, that period was obviously tremendously profitable for precious metals. I mean, there was a lot more volatility in the 60s and 70s compared to the 2000s. Uh, but precious metals ultimately, I mean, performed fantastically. So, I, I mean, to, to button up uh, that long statement and analysis, looking at history and what happened in the 60s and 70s, that doesn't um, that doesn't change, you know, my overall bullish macro view and uh, i think that at some point you know perhaps it's going to be soon but at some point in the first half of this year these ratios will be making a bottom at a very important bottom and they'll trend higher again and so it's, it's just interesting that's how markets work you know we can look at these ratios and say well precious metals are way too weak they're going lower but the other side of the coin is yeah they're, they're so oversold and fundamentals are still bullish that they're probably going to make an important low and uh you know start to rebound higher again 
So, Jordan, I'm going to post a monthly chart. It's going to be a bit hard to see, but I'm going to post it underneath this interview that shows the gold to S&P ratio. And one thing that really stands out to me is that even after that impressive run that gold had starting in about 2019, moving the whole way up to pretty much all-time highs just last year, the ratio really didn't do much in terms of breaking out. That just shows how much more money was also going into the broad averages. And this is actually a pretty, well, boring and range-bound chart when you look at gold to the S&P, especially compared to where it was back in 2011. So I get the argument that there could be a lot of upside here, but What could be that catalyst? And I guess even more importantly, if we do start to see that shift more into precious metals, does that mean we're going to see almost a euphoric move higher, an aggressive, almost skyrocketing move higher? Or is it going to be almost as we've seen in the last six months of gold grinding lower? Is that what it's going to take, gold grinding higher to get some more optimism in here? Well, I... You know, as far as what's the cause, you know, the first thing I want to say is you're right about the ratio, because when we do get a a breakout in these ratios, it's probably going to coincide or happen around the time we see gold breaking above 2090 for good. And I mean, the so the outlook for gold itself, you know, I wrote an article a couple of days ago discussing the cup and handle pattern. I mean, this is a 10, 11 year pattern. That's super bullish. So when we see this market making new highs, precious metals, that is, I, I do think we're going to see momentum really building. And I mean, I hate to use the term vertical move, but I mean, it will be an impulsive upside move when this market you know, breaks the August 2020 highs. Um, so I, I mean, I agree with your statement there. Uh, but as far as the cause, I mean, it could be you know, a lot of people are obviously talking about deflation and a crash. I mean, I'm hearing about it daily. People are worried about it. People are talking about it. Another deflationary crash. I think, you know, we have to keep the other scenario in mind. And what you go back to the mid to late sixties, what happened in, I think late 1968, um, was if you look at the chart of a CPI, Um, you know, that had like a mini breakout in 1964, 65. And when that happened, then gold stocks really went vertical. Uh, and, and it happened again in 1968. And that was like, I think like a 20 year or 15 year breakout in inflation at the time. And that was really significant. That's basically when the stock market, the, the bull market really ended in the stock market in that period. And if you look at the CPI now, you can go back to 30 years ago in 1990. You can draw a trend line. It's not a perfect downtrend line. I mean, it it connects every peak except for, I think, one going back over the last 30 years. And so, you know, I don't know, I mean, if it's at 3% or 3.2 or 2.7, but it's somewhere around there. So if we see the CPI breaking above uh, current trend line resistance, and I mean, it clearly breaks it and it sustains it, um, I think that's going to be the trigger. And I mean, it's obviously going to be super bullish for precious metals and commodities, but it's going to be bearish for the stock market. And I say that because when you see inflation get to a certain level, you know, maybe it's three and a half percent. I don't know. It's going to start to be bearish for the stock market because costs are going to go up. uh, Borrowing costs are going to be in, in, in all, in all of that. And so that's when you're going to see capital, really flow out of the stock market and into hard assets. So, I mean, I I could be wrong about the cause. I don't think it's going to be a deflationary one. Uh, I think it's more going to be an inflationary one. Um, So that would be my answer to that. But that, yeah, watch the CPI because that's something that's very important to watch. And and that's, you know, because a lot of people have the view, well, and a little inflation is good for the stock market. And that might be true. But eventually, if we see the CPI breaking above its 30-year downtrend, I mean, that's going to be very good for our sector, not good for the stock market. And that's going to be the catalyst to trigger uh, these massive breakouts in these charts. All right. Well, that is a pretty defined data point that we can all watch. And we'll keep a close eye on that. I do agree with you. If we do start to see some of this inflation data really pick up steam, I think it throws a lot of the current narrative on its head, even including Fed policy 
even though the Fed said that they're okay with letting inflation run higher. But any sort of exploding inflation, that does change everything. Let's look a bit more specifically at, say, the gold chart or the GDX chart and this general oversold breadth that we are seeing. Look, even GDX, it has bounced a little bit from that low it put in at the tail end of November, but it's been a choppy rebound and it really hasn't gotten above any of the recent highs, uh, even though they were all lower highs, when the market was moving lower. So how are you viewing the current status in terms of this oversold breadth? Well, I mean, I was coming into this week and really thinking, we're pretty oversold, but you know, I want to start buying about seven per six to eight percent lower in a handful of my stocks. And I don't know exactly how low we got. I mean, this was kind of a weird week because we had the holiday and then um, we had the holiday in the U S and then there was trading in Canada. So that always kind of messes up the technicals for a day or two, but coming into the week, Corey, uh, in terms of looking at the Huey and GDXJ and how many of these stocks had closed above the 20 and 50 day, uh, they were like, on, you know, in single digits or 10, 11 percent, 14 percent in some cases. So on a short term basis, the sector is getting really oversold. Uh, but even the percentage of stocks that uh, closed above the 200 day moving average last Friday, uh, I mean, that was pretty low. I'm, I'm looking at the Huey right now. That was 33 percent. Uh, GDXJ, I think that was around the same level. So the the breadth is telling us this sector is really oversold. Now, the advanced decline line has been really weak, though. There's been no positive diversion. So I don't, you know, I, I don't know if this is a higher low that we're seeing this this move today. Um, you know, gun to my head, I'd probably say no, because I just there there wasn't any in the last couple of days. I didn't see any divergences. Again, the GDX advanced decline line was really weak. And I mentioned this weekend, you know, we could get a weak rally before another leg lower to a, a sustainable bottom. So I we'll just have to see how things progress. I mean, if this is a higher low in the sector, which I don't think it is, you'd probably see a lot of choppy action going forward anyway. So I, I do think it could be a year of a lot of choppy action. But that being said, I think. If we have a bit of a rally here and then we sell off again, that sell off will lead to a, a pretty good buying opportunity because we were get, I mean, we were getting pretty close to like really strong support in these markets. We weren't quite there yet, but we'll see. I mean, maybe after this rally, we'll make another leg lower down to even you know stronger support and more oversold breadth, which, as I said, that would be a better, a good buying opportunity. Yeah, you're not alone in saying that one more little washout or breakdown could be and is actually good for the market in terms of just repricing everything and providing new entry points. I just want to ask you, though, when it comes to the type of stocks, let's say gold stocks that you're going to be watching to at least indicate maybe a change in sentiment or a change in general tone for the sector, is it going to be the majors that have continued to drift that would show you that more larger institutional money is coming in? Or are you going to be looking down the food chain, maybe at some of the juniors, to show you that the retail market, kind of that fast money, is coming back into the sector? That's an excellent question. And to be honest, I'm not really sure because I like looking at everything at once, but the like some of the royalty companies and some of the majors have really performed poorly. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Like if they could start getting a bid before everything else, that would be a good sign. But generally I just and I just like to watch everything to be completely honest. So I, I, and to be honest, I, I don't know. I mean, we could, we could see a lower everything bottoms at the same time, or, you know, maybe we see the majors, which have performed really poorly other than Newmont. I think, um, you know, maybe they'll start to get a bid before everything else. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but also I'll go back to what I said before the GDX advanced decline line. So if we start to see that showing some positive divergences, that would be a really good sign. I mean, if we start to see gold doing better against foreign currencies, that would be a good sign. You know, in addition to precious metals starting to fare better against the stock market. Okay. 
Jordan, we'll wrap it up there. Again, I really find that one chart really interesting, the ratio between gold and the S&P and the lack of any significant breakout when we did have that nice run in gold just goes to show how much money came into not just the precious metals, but a wide range of financial assets. Jordan, thanks for your time, buddy. I'll chat with you again next week.